Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this edition of uh, Fireside Chat uh, from Infosys Cobalt. I'm uh, delighted to have the discussion with Alison Ortiz, uh, Global Partner Development Manager from Amazon AWS, responsible for consumer retail and logistics vertical. And uh, she is going to be spending time with us to discuss about how the cloud is driving the next phase of evolution for retail sector worldwide. Welcome, Alison. Thank you very much for having me, Isabel. It's my pleasure to be here. So, Alison, just over a year ago, countries across the world went into lockdown, and for the retailers and the entire nation, building experiences around the human interactions had to change almost overnight. And it is continuing to change almost on a weekly basis. What do you see the short term and the long term impact for retailers, and how does cloud fit in? To their uh, response plan for the same? Sure, that's a great question. This year has been like no other. Retailers have innovated and implemented new technologies in the, this past year in a way that will likely outlast the pandemic. Right. So looking forward as the country is eager to return to some semblance of pre-pandemic life, a lot of retailers are facing major logistical strains in getting new products to customers timely. It's been a long year and customers are looking forward to refreshing their wardrobe. I think we can all relate to a little pent up demand created as a result of this pandemic. Companies likely won't sort out their inventories to match shopper demand until closer to the back to school season which is why retailers are gonna need to be creative in ways to get inventory back and available to the customers. This may include promotions and pricing and different delivery models and different forms of engagement. We're seeing a lot of requests from our customers around improving customer insights and to get better at personalization and campaign management. For the merchandising teams, we're getting a lot of requests around improving their forecasting and allocation models, moving from a demand planning model to a demand sensing model to deliver the right products to the right stores at the right time. Especially important as our logistical systems recover from the strain due to the COVID pandemic. We're also getting a lot of questions around price optimization and dynamic pricing. So. COVID-19 changed customers' preferences and, excuse me, and their experience, right? And these new habits are likely to persist. To support consumer evolving expectations, it's imperative that retailers keep pace. The cloud has been and will continue to be a strategic investment that enables retailers to innovate. Customers expect relevant personalization, they stores that offer both immersion and same-day pickup, customer shopping channels of mobile, web, in-person are blending, and retailers now must proactively engage at every single step before, during, and post-purchase. However, 88% of retailers don't believe that they can personalize effectively, and most forecasts have insufficient inputs. They rate AI and ML as number one as an opportunity, but consistently listed as number eight for their spending priority. Through AWS, born from retail and built for retailers, we share Amazon's own tested and proven innovation to help retailers reinvent their legacy applications for new value, complete their view of the customers for relevant insight, and transform their engagement for increased sales velocity. Accessibility to AI and ML is a significant opportunity in retail. With Amazon Forecast and Amazon Personalize, we're able to leverage 20 years of AI and ML expertise powering Amazon.com, creating higher quality recommendations and 50% more accurate forecasts. And AI and ML is now accessible to all with no machine learning required to immediately train, test, and learn the models, and to make the complex simple. For in-store experience, customers have developed new shopping habits as a result of COVID-19 
and those will likely continue even after the pandemic. They'll continue to shop in stores, but they're looking for touchless checkout options and customer-driven interactions. Customers want to merge the immediate gratification of in-store shopping experience with the self-service and convenience of online shopping, giving them the ability to decide their own level of engagement. The in-store experience offers the thrill of the treasure hunt, right? The excitement of constant reinvention, the community of the store brand, the bundling of products and services, allowing customers to build their own experience. I equate this to a choose your own adventure book. Customers want the ability to choose. In the 2020 Consumer Trends Survey, 55% of customers don't think it's necessary to interact with store associates at point of sale. However, 64% of all respondents believe that it's still necessary to interact with store associates while shopping. So when we think about customer in-store interactions, your extended store application built on Scava running on AWS allows the store associates to reallocate their time to be more thoughtful in their customer interactions, focusing on value-added activities for the customers, such as service and product recommendations, and not routine tasks such as checkout that do little to enhance the customer experience. Even after the customer leaves a store, the personalized experience of an in-store associate continues to influence customer shopping experience. 43% of all online purchases are made after personal recommendations. Continuing on our in-store journey, image recognition and asset tracking eliminate many of the steps in the buying process that reduce conversion and provide the experience that customers are looking for while improving metrics for shrink and associate productivity. With Boundless Store, which Infosys presented at Benarek Big Show and is currently highlighted in the Retail Builders Lab in Germany, we're using computer vision for labor and merchandise optimization, real-time engagement, analysis, and most importantly, frictionless checkout. This past year has demonstrated how important it is to be able to maintain effective contact centers as customers were challenged to keep their contact centers operational while staff had to work from home and manage increased volume that outpaced their usual capacities. Grocers like Morrison in the UK used Amazon Connect and the integration to Salesforce to gain insights about why customers are calling in and use automated messages to help them. Customers could also call through Amazon Connect to order groceries over the phone, no account or internet needed, meeting the needs of the customers where they are. Izzel, I have a question for you. So cloud for AWS is clearly the way forward. How is Infosys gearing up its cloud capabilities to address the challenges posed by retailers? Alison, uh, before I respond to your question, uh, the, what you just outlined, it's uh, amazing, right? Going from uh, demand forecasting to demand sensing and uh, looking at the customer behavior and the personalization and the in-store, the Amazon walkout and go and boundless stores. Uh, this is really phenomenal, uh, the response plan by the retailers. Now, coming to your question on uh, what's happening at uh, Infosys uh, with respect to our cloud capabilities, I have uh, very exciting news to share with you. Um, Infosys has launched Infosys Cobalt. Uh, Infosys Cobalt is a, a set of services, solutions, and platforms which acts as a force multi multiplier for cloud transformations for the retail business. If you look at it, the retail is going through a redesigning of their enterprise. To redesign an enterprise from the core and also build the new cloud uh, first capabilities to create seamless experience for those consumers in whether it is public cloud or the private cloud or the hybrid cloud, you need set of services and solutions. And that's what Infosys Cobalt has been focusing on. And with Infosys uh, Cobalt services, we have uh, over 14,000 cloud assets. I will repeat, it is 14,000 cloud assets and over 200 industry cloud solutions 
which are helping our customers as they go through the cloud transformation. And uh, now let me peel the onion a little bit. What are we meaning by 14,000 cloud assets? These 14,000 cloud assets are categorized into four buckets. We have uh, business assets and uh, we have engineering assets and we have knowledge assets and we have learning assets. Business assets are things like we have a readily available solution like the inventory 360 or the, uh, you know, the extended store solutions, what you are talking about. The engineering assets are things like, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, frameworks and we have uh, a, a reusable piece of uh, uh, artifacts which can be readily used and that is available. And the knowledge assets are things like, you know, our collective uh, frameworks and uh, some of the approaches what we have done in the other customers that is available in the uh, Cobalt uh, framework. And the last but not least, the learning assets, which is approaches, best practices, common things which other people have failed. All of these assets are available for under this Cobalt framework. Now, how are we bringing this 14,000 assets to our uh, customers? It's uh, through a, we are creating a world largest enterprise cloud community. And that is called Infosys Cobalt community. And in the Infosys Cobalt community, we are having all these assets, all these business solutions and housed there under a, a Cobalt store, which is available for our customers and uh, the ecosystem. Now, we have a very rigid governance on what gets into the Cobalt store. We have a, a 25, point, uh, 25 point check uh, before any assets gets onto the Cobalt store. And it also has a built-in telemetry to constantly improve the Cobalt store experience. Now this Cobalt store and along with the Cobalt lab and the playground, all of this, it makes it very easy for anybody to rapidly build a prototype or co-create a, a piece of innovation, which will help them in their cloud transformation. Now, you might ask who is in this community? This community is having yeah, all the Infosys experts and our clients are there and the partners like uh, AWS are also having a participation in this community. And also we are bringing in academics institutions also to participate in this cloud community. Now, on top of this, in the future, we are also going to be opening up this to uh, cloud citizen developers or the gig workers also can take part participation in this Cobalt community. So this Infosys Cobalt is probably one of the kind in the market for enterprises to do enterprise wide transformation. Uh, we don't see anybody else having anything like this in the market. Now, let me take this to a retail uh, flavor. Now, if you look at the NRF, NRF earlier in February of this month announced that uh, the anticipated growth in retail is going to be somewhere between 6.5% to 8.2%. Uh, that's going to be a $4.3 trillion. This $4.3 trillion retail business, if today with all the things what you just mentioned about, whether it is the demand forecasting, demand sensing, customer behavior, in-store experience, your supply chain uh, challenges, the last mile delivery challenges, each one of this requires the retailers and the brands to look at cloud, how that can be uh, made it easy for them to do the business and to transform themselves, innovate themselves, be relevant for the consumers. And all of that will require a significant amount of cloud transformation. Infosys Cobalt with all our assets and all our business solutions makes that cloud journey a lot more easier for the retailers. So that's what we have been working on Infosys side, getting ready for uh, this cloud transformations and the cloud capabilities for the retail industry. Now, um, Alison, I know that you have spent a lot of your experience on the other side of the spectrum. You know, I come from a technology background. AWS is, you know, while it's, uh, you know, uh, born for retail, you know, uh, as, as a theme, and uh, you have joined from after spending a lot of years on the other side, uh, being on the retailer's shoes. Now, let me ask you this question, putting your retailer hat, 
how do you see that uh, the company should uh, adapt and embark on for their cloud transformation roadmap and what are the common pitfalls which they should avoid uh, in based on your retail experience <laughs> sure absolutely and you're right i've spent um, over 20 years in the retail industry both at a retail organization as well as work within nrf and i'm privileged to have the ability to to be able to see both sides of that conversation and blend them into one um, what you just described with cobalt and all of its uh, community assets and capabilities can be overwhelming for folks as they begin their cloud journey and that's why great partners are important such as infosys to help them on that using aws for their cloud strategy enables retailers to focus on the value added activities right the things that differentiate them from other retailers and provides more value to their customers retailers have access and store a lot of data from store operations marketing e-commerce um, and more and historically the challenge has been that the data has been in many different and disconnected systems making it difficult to create insights and identify actionable information to better serve the customers this is where aws can help as part of a cloud migration strategy it's important to have a defined path for your cloud operational strategy as retailers move from a discovery and learning model to a more significant cloud presence and usage retailers will want to make sure that they're operationally ready to manage that migration this is where great partners such as Infosys help our customers be successful in that journey. A lot of the big challenges for large organizations to move to the cloud aren't technical, right? They're about people and they're about culture. The biggest differences between organizations that talk about moving to the cloud and those that actually do it and be successful come down to a few things. First, senior leadership. Senior leadership needs to be aligned and truly committed that they want to move to the cloud. And they need to be clear about their expectations with the rest of the organization to get everyone on the same page, working towards the same goal. It's easy for others to do nothing or block if the leadership team isn't making it a priority and building a culture for change. Then the most successful organizations moving to the cloud start with an aggressive top-down goal that force the organization to move faster than it would or have organically. Third, and back to my earlier point, it's important that organizations are trained and on the cloud and comfortable with the concept as part of the whole process. We train hundreds of thousands of people a year for that very purpose. And last, sometimes we find, and I've been there, where organizations can get paralyzed if they can't figure out how to move every last workload. There's no need to boil the ocean. So we often work with organizations to do a portfolio analysis to assess each application and build a plan for what needs to move first, medium term and long term. This helps the organizations get benefits of the cloud for many of their applications much more quickly. And it really helps inform them on how they need to move. Thank you very much for your time as well. Yeah, Alison, that is a wonderful uh, summary based on your experience. Uh, if I had to summarize it, uh, don't just go to the cloud, transform with the cloud. And uh, as uh, all our listeners, uh, both Infosys and AWS are here to help you in succeed in the cloud. And uh, with that, uh, we will wrap up this edition of this uh, Fireside Chat. Uh, looking forward to meet you all in the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you.